The Braves beat the Dodgers yesterday, 7-3. This is a game-winning RBI. Mailer, pop fly single. Guerrero couldn't catch it. Hubbard tags and scores easily. Rick Mailer won his ninth game. And this salted it away. Rafael Ramirez, right down the line, high into the air. Landro couldn't make the catch. It's a three-run homer. Rafael's got a hot bat. Good afternoon, everybody. Along with Skip Carey, this is Ernie Johnson speaking to you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, where this afternoon we play the rubber game of the three-game set. The Dodgers won here on Friday. San Francisco is in tomorrow, and you have the pitchers for this afternoon's game. Steve Shields still shooting for his first Major League victory. This is his third start. He hasn't lost any games either, and his pitching opponent, a very, very good one, left-hander Fernando Valenzuela for the Dodgers. We'll be back with all the action right after this message. The umpires at home plate, the meeting is taking place, and Mr. Carey has a starting lineup. Okay, Ernie, for the Dodgers, Steve Sachs leads it off at second base. Mariano Duncan, their shortstop, bat second. Ken Landro in left field hits third. Pete Guerrero, the center fielder, hits cleanup. Greg Brock will play first, bat fifth. Mike Marshall in right field hits sixth. Mike Socia will do the catching. He will bat seventh. Dave Anderson at third base hitting eighth. And Fernando Valenzuela will do the pitching. Fernando five and six, a 2.06 earned run average. For the Braves, Rafael Ramirez leads it off at shortstop. Brad Cummins plays right field, hits second. Dale Murphy, the center fielder, hits third. And Bob Horner plays third, bats cleanup. Terry Harper will play left field. He will bat fifth. Chris Chambliss at first base hits sixth. Glenn Hubbard will play second, bats seventh. Larry Owen will catch and hit eighth. And Steve Shields will do the pitching. Shields has no record, a 4.22 earned run average. This will be his third start of the year. The umpires, Charlie Williams behind the plate, Randy Marsh at first base, Billy Williams at second, and John McSherry will call the plays at third. Defensively, the Braves will have Chambliss at first, Hubbard at second, Ramirez at short, Horner at third, Owen will do the catching from left to right in the outfield, Harper, Murphy, and Cummins. Right now, Chief Nakahoma is in the center of the diamond, imploring the spirits for a Braves win, and now he makes his way toward the left field corner. Look at his split. You know, we mentioned the other night the Phil Necro golf tournament out at Brookfield West on July 15th to benefit Spina Bifida. And I was sorry to learn over the weekend that Jeffrey Easley passed away last week. He was the Spina Bifida poster boy for two years and a great Braves fan. And we certainly pass along our sympathy to his to his family. For more information about that golf tournament, just call the Spina Bifida office at 972-2885 or the Braves Merchandise Department at 522-7630. Well, the Braves have taken the field. All but pitcher Steve Shields is about to make his way to the mound. He's pitching for the folks close to home. He's from Gadsden, Alabama. And he will take his warm-up tosses and then we will be underway. As Ernie mentioned, the Giants come to call tomorrow. Our first look at them. The San Francisco team will be in for three games. 7.40 tomorrow, no TV. 7.40 television on Tuesday, 5.40 on Wednesday. Then the Reds for a four-game set over the weekend. And then Houston for four before the Braves hit the road again, going to Cincinnati, Houston, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Shields completes his warm-up tosses in the other baseball at the end of an inning. Phillies lead Montreal 3-0. That's the only game underway in the National League in the American. Detroit and Toronto were tied 1-1 one one after an inning of play. Toronto up by 6.5 in the American League East. It will be Sachs, Duncan, and Landro in the first temperature, about 90 degrees at the ballpark under mostly sunny skies, though there are some fleecy white clouds and a few thunder clouds sweeping past. The forecast is a good one. This is the rubber game of the series. The Dodgers won Friday night. The Braves triumphed yesterday afternoon. Larry Owen has really sparkled for Atlanta behind the plate in the first two games of the series, and he is reunited with Shields. They were battery mates 
in Richmond at the outset of this 1985 baseball season. Steve Bedrosian of the Braves, by the way, has been taken to the hospital. He has some back problems, stiffness, and he's being worked on. It's a muscle strain in the lower back. He's still penciled in as the Braves starter on Tuesday, but that's subject to change. See how he comes along here. Well, Sachs advances to the batter's box and here with a play-by-play -play story. Once again is Ernie Johnson. Thank you, Skip. Sachs is three for ten in the series. He was caught stealing one. He'd be followed by Mariano Duncan and then Ken Landro. Tom Lasorda has used the same lineup for three straight games with the exception of the pitcher. Yesterday we had a crowd of 36,000. On Friday, 24,000. It'll be 20 plus here today. The outfield shade sacks just a bit toward right. Shields with the first pitch were underway. See right call. And the Owen. A little bit high with the fastball. Lifetime against the Braves. Sachs is batted 293. And the 1-1. One -one. Hi. Manny Moda, their coach at first. Joe Malfitano, coaches at third. He's been in baseball a long time. Toward right center, Comets. Franco. That ball was well hit, but Brad Comets has speed. Simon's playing today because there's a lefty pitcher. He got to this ball easily, got a good jump on it, and actually had to slam on the brakes to make the play. One down. Now the batter is Mariano Duncan. He's hitless in the series. Second youngest player in the National League at 22. Strike call. Dwight Gooden is the youngest. The one Hit foul pass first. San Francisco in tomorrow. It'll be our first look at the Giants and their new manager, Jim Davenport. He coached for many years for San Francisco. The 0-2, a little bit high with a curveball. We'll also have Cincinnati and Houston. They'll play four games apiece here. If you didn't hear, the Reds beat the Padres last night. Curve just missed, two and two. Cincinnati's only two and a half back. They were swept on Friday night, and they showed a little character yesterday. 7-4 was the final. 2-2. Popped him up. Who's going to catch it? Chambliss comes all the way from third. Owen could have made it. Chambliss called him off. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I interviewed him one day on the radio and he said, I don't know if you've ever heard of Hoax Bluff. I said, oh, sure, everybody has. Well, I'm sure he's used every pass that he can get today. What county is that in, Ernie, Hoax Bluff? Well, it's near Gadsden, if that's Gadsden it's County. It's E-T-O-W-A-H. Etowah. 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 I, I said a tower the other day, and I'm still hearing about it. Low inside. There's a few uh, communities down here in Georgia that we've gotten wrong over the years. Ooh. And still do. Two all. Foul away. Landro. Couple of hits in the series. Got an RBI and a sack fly. You ever hear that famous Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon? <laughs> the 
he's got a ball starting the ring. He used to have a ballpark named after him in this town. Yeah. Not Ponce de Leon, no sir. Ponce Calia. <laughs> now the two on. Toward first, gonna be an easy inning for Steve Hill. Campbell takes care of him. That's a one, two, three for the young righty. Rays are coming to bat. Fernando. He's really kept his weight down. Valenzuela's 5'11", 195. What's that got to do with it? <laughs> I was wondering if you're going to jump in on that. He's had a funny year. He's 5 and 6 with a, one of the best ERAs in the National League. He has a screwball, fastball, curve, slider, you name it. He can throw it. Screwball is his pet pitch. Last year he was 12 and 17, but his ERA was 3.03. The 1-0. A little bit outside. 2-0. Comments is on deck. Valenzuela looks to the skies and delivers a strike. Peculiar habit. You're supposed to keep your eye on the target but quite a few pitchers don't two one outside as well has been tough against atlanta last year he beat him three times he was three and all in lifetime he's nine and three Ramirez with five hits in a series out of ten at bat. Has a homer and four RBIs. He's the hottest brave hitter right now at 281. Three two. By the way. The Mets got two. They lead the Cardinals two nothing. That is the first of two at Chase Stadium, New York. They're now in the third inning. But they got a mob for that one. Yes, sir. The Cardinals knocked him out of first yesterday. Fly ball right center. Somebody. Marshall, after looking at Guerrero, makes the catch. A lazy fly to right center out number one is Brad Cobbins. So while you're watching here this afternoon, if you see any pitches, from Valenzuela go down and away from a right-handed batter. That's the screwball. And once in a while, he'll throw it to a lefty. He changes speeds on it, too. Thomas had a triple here on Friday night. The other game he started, Scrooge. Eddie House has an interesting theory on how to hit Valenzuela. I said, you can't look for a pitch against him. Look for a zone. Guess either inside or outside and wait for a pitch in that zone. He pitches very old. He's only 24. He must have looked in the right zone. Brad Thomas reached out and popped it in the right field. He hit that right where it was pitched. Outside corner. That's just what Eddie was talking about. It looked like he was looking for the pitch away and had made up his mind when he got it, he was going to go that way. Here it is again. Fastball outside part of the plate, and that's exactly what he did. Now Murphy with good speed at first base.
Jim Murphy makes it 2 nothing. I don't care who you are, it's tough to pitch from behind. A breaking ball, he got it up right over the heart of the plate. Two zip. The batter's Horner. Murphy, 14. Now he has 41 RBIs. Second to Jack Clark, who has 45 and Hill has 50. There's a liner, but right out the left fielder. Horner hit it hard, so there have been three straight balls hit hard off Valenzuela. Single by Cummins, a homer by Murphy, and an out by Bob Horner. For Murphy, that was home run in his career, 2-14. Terry Harper bounces it to third. Top play. Anderson just got him with a lob toss. He didn't throw it that hard. Harper almost beat it up. A hand for the Braves and Murphy. He got to the second. Two nothing at last. to the second inning. We've talked about drafted players. The draft was last Monday. Now the Braves and other major league ball clubs have to sign those players. And along those lines, the Braves are holding their tryout camp. You don't have to be drafted to make the major leagues. We've got so many examples of that. The tryouts will be in six cities in 1985. Each player should bring their own glove and shoes. Bat, balls, and catching gear will be provided. All workouts begin at 9 o'clock in the morning. Anyone between the ages of 16 and 23 will be eligible. And here's our first tryout camp. It'll be June 15th and 16th. Right here in Atlanta. Guerrero drives it foul out of play. The tryout camp location is the Cab College Central Campus on Memorial Drive. That's June 15th and 16th here in Atlanta. June 22nd will be in Mobile, Alabama. Location is South Alabama University, Stanley Field. Guerrero's had a good series with a couple of homers. Four RBIs. Good curveball. Let's think of some of the players who weren't drafted. Ken Oberkfell, who makes about 600000 a year, is one. I think Raleigh Fingers was not a drafted player. Well, now that you mention that. Ooh. Ooh, the old-timer's ready for me. I did this on the Major League Report. The award-winning Major League Report. The award winning. This is on radio. And the information was furnished by one of our good fans. That's well hit in the center field base there. I'll just quickly give you a lineup of fellows that were selected as they signed as free agents. Renly the catcher, Dan Dries in the first baseman, Tommy Herr, National League's leading hitter second. UL Washington shortstop, I made up a team. Oberkfell third, Claude L. Washington, Ron Kittle, and Terry Poole in the outfield. And what a pitching staff. Ken Forge, Bob Ojeda, Bryn Smith, Todd Needham, Pure, Bruce Suter, Donnie Moore, Kent Tacovey, Dan Quisenberry, Al Holland, Jeff Reardon, and Doug Sis. They'd win a few games, wouldn't they? You know what that proves? I think Guerrero, by the way, streamed something down at first base. That proves a lot of relief pitchers are guys who didn't have over overwhelming fastballs and thus weren't drafted. You're right. I noticed that so many relief pitchers were, were on that list. And Reardon, who got his 17th. Yesterday, his 17th save signed as a free agent. Greg Brock, two for six, with a home run in the series. 
Guerrero's off first. Idaway, 2-0. The big problem that Paul Snyder and other teams will face signing these kids is whether they want to go on to college. Foul away. And if they want to go on to college, they're not going to sign for peanuts. They want a big bonus. But baseball has got a great plan. They can say to these players, you want to go to college? If you play for us in the spring and summer, we'll pay your way through college in addition to your bonus. We'll pay everything. It'll take you a little bit longer, but you'll have your education when you're through playing baseball. They have a scholarship plan. Pitch is low, three and one. And let's be honest about it. Many educators will tell you, if you've got a chance, no matter the sport, to sign a, if you're a football, basketball player, a multi-year contract, George Chambliss, he's going to try for the force. He got him. I can't believe that play. I can't believe that they got the double play because Chambliss at first thought he would touch the base, and let's watch it. I can't believe he even tried for it. He starts back there. Yeah, why not? A bang, bang play there, and Rafi got it back to him just in time. Beautiful play by Chambliss. Brock is not fast, you could tell that, but that ball had to travel 90 feet both ways from first to second back, and they still got him. And he's a left-handed batter, and there's a drive to right field by Marshall to the fence. It might be out of here, and it is, and we've got a 2 one game. Marshall plays long ball. That makes that double play that much more important for well, the Braves still have the lead here. Yep. The batter is Mike Sosha. Here's the home run again. That's ball right down the heart of the plate. And he's strong enough to get it out in any direction in this ballpark. Two fellows will remind me of one another. Big, strong, clean-cut kids. Murphy and Marshall have hit home runs here today. They're about the same size, and they can take you downtown in any direction. Just to quickly finish my point, educators will tell you, if you can make a million dollars or so, you know, you then go to college and find out how to invest it if you want to, but college can't guarantee you that kind of money. Pretty hard to turn down that big contract. You're not going to get as large a contract in baseball, but they're still up there in six figures for their top draft choice. Under Chambliss is loved by Sosha. And let's watch. Will they have a play? Nope. That'll be a double under the glove of Chris Chambliss. I thought he was going to smother it. He didn't. And the result is a double. Now Dave Anderson, there have been three hits in this inning, all well hit, off Steve Shields. Anderson has two hits and seven tries. One and out. Valenzuela's next. Be careful what you say today, too. The head warrior is here. Our executive producer, Don Ellis. Well, He's uh, worrying right now, I bet. One and two. <laughs> he worries between pitches because he's afraid I'm going to say something. I don't blame him for worrying. I worry about the same thing myself. Two outs a runner second. Curve ball, Anderson out of there. Fields gets his first strikeout. The Dodgers pick up a run on Mark 
Mitchell's homer. It was a slick double play, or it would have been worse. We go to the bottom of the second. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta Braves and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game must express written consent of the Atlanta Braves, and the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited. All right, you saw Raffi's pals down on the right field side. There's a bouncer to the mound by Chris Chambliss on number one. Rafael Ramirez, in conjunction with the police athletic league purchases 40 tickets for each home game in june july and august and they select 40 deserving youngsters to be out here as guests of raffi's i think it's a nice gesture by the Braves shortstop this is hubbard with one down hit toward right center guerrero not going to say anything till he catches it because of friday night and he made a nice catch It appeared that he slipped for a moment, but he recovered in time to make a nice play. Pedro Guerrero. He still acts a little bit as if he strained his back. Yeah. Friday night, he should have caught a ball off the bat of Commons, but somehow he didn't. Went for a triple. But he'd rather be out in the outfield than at third base. Everyone's heard that story. He just does not like to play the infield. And with a bat like his, I just say, you want to play outfield? You got it, pal. And this is Larry Owen, who's impressed. Blown away. He's come up here, and he's batting 500 and handled the pitching well. Threw out sacks. Might be the first time he's batted against this Scroogey. Owen is three for six in the series. Two outs. Just missed. Charlie Williams calling the balls and strikes. So she tried to pull that in. Excuse me. For some reason, he makes me think of Jack Pimple. Remember him? He played for the Dodgers and did a great job that one year. Had about 900. Yep. Hasn't been heard from since. Yep. Only 99. Oh, and it may be the other way around. They wonder. A year and a half ago, they were thinking about making him a coach. Rough than that, really. Ball four. Gets the pitcher up in this inning. There's nothing else. Oh, and gets a walk. Understand Larry Owen took a lot of batting practice. Extra hitting down at Richmond. He's been doing it now. Even last year. Working with Eddie Haas to have a quicker bat. Not grip the bat so tightly. You know, not squeeze the sawdust out of it. Obviously, it's helped because he was hitting about 267 when they brought him up. Shields on one. Also said he went back to a stance he used in college. So he hasn't felt as comfortable since his younger days. Look at that. They said left. They still. That was a pitch up, and Shields gets his first major league hit. They're dancing in the old hometown. is given him a standing ovation. The young man who pitched nine years in the minor leagues would not give up. Braves signed him last year, and here he is in the major league. Those kinds of stories make interesting reading. Ramirez and the 1-0 is outside. 2-0. In fact, our battery today is really a rags to riches type situation. Then they have Dave Schuler on the staff. He was not with the ball club last year. Runners first and second. He wasn't with the organization last year, Mr. Schuler. 
He was in the Montreal organization. 2-0. High with a fastball. 3-0. Another bad one. They're loaded for comments. In fact, I bet Spiller will go down in the record books. The guy who had his debut latest at night in Major League history. <laughs> Before the fewest fans. <laughs> when did you pitch? Well, it was about 1.30 in the morning. Morning. 3 all. Strike. 3 and 1. They'll score at Baltimore between the Red Sox and the Orioles. They're in the third. And Toronto's tied Detroit. It's 2-2 in the fourth now. 3-1 pitch. Hit foul down the right side. Right at his group. Well, over their head. That was a big series for the Toronto Blue Jays over the weekend. They won two out of three from Detroit. They were humbled yesterday. But Toronto... Still leads Baltimore by six and a half and the Tigers by seven and a half. Well, the runners will be off on this pitch. Three, two, and two outs. Coming. Fly ball, not going to carry. Center field. Guerrero. And the Braves strand two, and we've played two. We go to the third, two to one, Atlanta. As we go to the third, we want you to know that this game is brought to you in stereo. Beautiful. That's why we sound marvelous. Yeah, marvelous, darling. You're on the left channel. I'm on the right channel. Glimpse of the crowd and probably temperature of around 90 to 92 right now. And it should number 25 to 30,000. We're playing in the third inning, two to one, Atlanta. And Valenzuela, who's not a bad hitter for a pitcher, will lead it off. He's batting 182. At Cincinnati, there's no score. They played two, the Padres and the Reds. The Mets are leading St. Louis 2-1 in the fifth. No score at Chicago in the second for the Cubs. And they've gotten some pitching lately. it off. Shields will try to come back at this inning. He gave up three hits, including a homer in the second. Sachs is on deck. Curve. Hubbard can't make it. They sit center. Fernando with a bouncing single just out of the reach of everybody. Ernie, our old pal Charlie Smith call from WCNN Radio out here at the ballpark this afternoon. He catches the Braves frequently. Atlanta's attendance is about 20,000 ahead of last year. Despite the position in the standings, of which hopefully all feel will get better. The Braves now nine and a half out, 21 and 30. But it would be really a terrible blow if Pedrosian misses a few starts. They feel that he won't. He's scheduled to start Tuesday, but his back's been bothering him. Sachs fouls it away. Braves already have Perez and Barker on the DL. Dodd 
Valenzuela with no jacket at first base. He doesn't need one. Sacks hit the ball hard first time up. A liner to right. It's caught by Conley. 0 oh 2. Nobody out. And the 0 2 pitch. Fly ball left center. Murphy with no problem. His glass is gleaming. One away. Now Duncan. He popped the first first time up. He'd be followed by Landro. Kansas City's taken over first place in the American League West. They're a half game ahead of California. The White Sox are only one back in Oakland three. Funded five. That is the closest race the American League West as far as the distance between first and last. Only eight and a half games between first and last. No walls in one strike. She is with an 0 1. Hit toward Hubbard. They're going to get Fernando, and they might get two. A good throw, and they might have had two. He got Valenzuela, who ran into the tag, but then Hubbard's throw was high. And down the second base goes Duncan. Yeah, Hubby just rushed it a little more than he had to. He knows Duncan has good running speed. Valenzuela, a bad bit of base running there. He's out. He was off balance and just threw it away, and he really didn't have that much time. It'll be a fielder's choice set into by Duncan, and air allows him, on Hubbard, allows him to reach second. So that's a tying run out there for Ken Landro. Landro bounced out first time up. Time call. Thought for a moment they call Bach. It would be the first Bach on a Braves pitcher. No other team in the National League can make that statement. Strike call, no one won. Another statement the Braves can make. A negative is they still haven't gotten their complete game. The 0 1. Low. One ball, one strike. I think Owen got crossed up. You want another obscure stat? Terry, Terry Harper is the only brave to be hit by a pitch this year. They're not, they're not dusting him off then, huh? One ball, one strike. Curve ball high, two and one. The Dodgers lead the National League in, in errors, but they've gone until yesterday, I think, six games without a boot. Six in a row. Two one, low. Dodgers have made 63 errors. The Braves have committed 48. New York has the fewest errors, 31. 3 1. Ball four. Well, you don't like to do that with this guy coming up. Guerrero's a batter, runners first and second. Shields went right through him in the first inning. One, two, three. Had trouble in the second. Now he's got runners first and second. 
And two down. And the first pitch to Pedro. Hit towards short to be out of it. Short to second. We get the tough out. And leads two. We go to the bottom of the third. The Braves are up by one. We're going to the bottom of the third. It's two to one Atlanta. And here's Skip. Here's Skip. <laughs> oh. Excuse me. Brad comments will lead off the third for Atlanta. He singled the right his first time. And he hits one that way again. Good play by Brock. He really had him played wide to the bag. Valenzuela does his job, and thus there's one out. The Lakers 12 minutes away from becoming NBA champions. They lead Boston 82-73 after three quarters. Murph whacked the two-run homers. Initial trip. Fernando, after running over to first, is a little bit winded, I guess. Now, Charlie Williams will accompany Sosha to the mound, probably to make sure that this is not a... I don't know why he's accompanying. But to see if Fernando's all right, I guess. Tommy. And there's Fernando. It's a hot afternoon in Atlanta, but you wouldn't think that would bother Valenzuela. Navajoa, Sonora, Mexico, too, where Fernando grew up. The last 2 0 pitch he hit out of the ballpark. He didn't miss by much with this one. He had a good swing, but fouled it away. Larry Denning of WHPY Radio, Smithfield, and Clayton, North Carolina, here at the ballpark. Want to be remembered for the folks back home. The 2 1 pitch. Just missed outside. It's three and one. Bob Horner waits on deck. One out here. Nobody on in the third. Braves lead it 2 1. One on, one out. Fernando walks his second. indication that he does not have his good stuff is that he has yet to strike out a batter in 96 innings coming in he had struck out 78 walked 31. Bernie brought up a great point you'd swear this guy's 33 or 34 from watching him pitch but he's just 24 years old strike the Horner outside edge of fastball. the screwball it's 0 and 2 Horner didn't think so and now Fernando with his big arsenal of pitches really has you where he wants you he's batting strikes with two pitches to the outside corner let's see what he does 0 and 2 nibbled for that same edge to the fastball outside by much up and in two balls two strike you knew he was going to come in on him somewhere along the line yeah you can't pitch one way all the time in fact many pitching coaches will tell you you have to be able to pitch tight especially if you're a right-handed pitcher and you're facing a left-handed batter you've got to be able to come close keep him off the plate from time to time the 
a 2-2. Two -two. Instead, the first, pretty close. Murph gets back. Our pal, the singing vendor hard at work down below, called in the Chicago Cubs yearbook the best vendor in all of baseball. He's got his Bracabella on today to shade him from the sun. He's doing it. Bang, bang play. Fernando thought he had him. Murphy looked like he was going, and he almost didn't make it done. Watch him move right there. See? That almost cost him. But he got on that corner with his hand. He's going. Hit foul. Good job of hitting by Horner. That ball was way outside the strike zone, but he protected the runner and almost had himself a base hit down the line. Still two and two. Murphy has stolen one base. He's only tried once this year. The first went in standing up and very nearly came off the bag. Still two and two. Let's see if Murphy's all right. Again, we await the 2-2 two -two pitch. The first. This time he's back easily. Valenzuela made his first major league appearance against the break in a relief role. That was back in 1980. Major League earned run average right at three coming into this year, and it's right at two this year. He is a great one. The first, back easily. Fernando's in no hurry. They go to Cincinnati next, so. Out of play, fastball. Waits on deck. There's one out here. The pitch. Drilled a mile, but foul. He jumped all over that. That's home run distance, but he hit a 25 feet foul down the line. Braves fan Dan Tucker recovering from the tonsillectomy, looking in this afternoon. Two balls, two strikes. The first. Fernando has gotten the crowd involved here. Into the dirt with a screwball. Good play by Sosha. Three and two. And since they had Murph running half the time on the two-two count, you'd guess he'd be running three and two with one up. Two pitch. He's going. Drilled fair into the corner. Murph may be able to score. He's going to round third. He's going to score easily. Horner's at second. Sending the runner. Pays off in a run. It's three to one. is one of those over the bag shots 
Horner hit it hard. It landed. Might have been on the chalk going over third. Didn't have to be. It went over the bag in fair territory. Guerrero, I should say Landro, playing it in. And Murphy scores easily. And Bob Horner had some good cuts. First time up, you got to remember, he hit it hard, but right at the left fielder. Harper hits a foul out of play, 0-1. Oh he bounced to third his first time. Horner in scoring position with one up. It's even now, one and one. Ernie Jansen, Skip Carey with you from the ballpark. Braves lead at 3-1, trying to win two out of three from Los Angeles. Started to go, they asked for help, and first base umpire Randy Marsh says he went around. It's one and two. Outside looked like the screw ball, two balls, two strikes. Three and two. Frankie Norman from Tupelo, Mississippi, here with the family. We can raise the right? Payoff. Capped weakly to third. Anderson has it. High throw, but he got back to the bag in time. Two up. It's all up to Chambliss if Atlanta's going to add yet another third inning run. Chris tapped to the mound on his first trip. One ball, no strikes. Two and off. Dave Walden out here at the ballpark this afternoon there. Dad Mike, former Milwaukee Braves announcer, now a play-by-play -play man out in Los Angeles. Know him well. Mike used to work for the Braves. Inside, Chambliss is aboard. Here's Hubbard. That's also, also Blaine Walsh, who used to broadcast the Braves games, lives here in Atlanta. Walks for Fernando. Hubbard flied to center his first time. No activity in the Dodger bullpen, but Fernando has not had his good stuff yet. Hubbard needs one RBI for 300 in his career. This is a good spot. Well, he's going to have to wait. Back, boots it. Nyman doesn't throw the ball. If he throws the ball, he's still got him, but he held on to it. It's a boot. You're right, if he throws it, after he picks it up, he's still got Hubbard. But right here, he looks up and didn't throw it. Very surprising play by the Dodger second baseman. Here's Buck Owen. Over Valenzuela now has to try to pitch around the mistake. Uh, Larry Owen will try to make him pay. I guess that's that lack of confidence Sachs has in his own throwing ability. That was the screwball, 0-1. Well, it might have been a little psychological. Got a hurry, had a runner breaking for third base, and throws it by, is another run score. But I still think he had to throw the ball. He still got him by a couple of steps sure. if he just... Yeah. 
the 0 1. Missed inside with a curve. It's one and one. Owen walked his first time. Another screwball fouled away. He's in the hole, a ball and two strikes. Oh, and three out of six since coming up. And the one two fit. With the bases loaded and two out. Struck him out with a screwball and the inning is over. First strike out of the afternoon for Fernando. He pitches around the air. But the Braves get a run on one hit. There was one air. Three men were left. At the end of three complete your score. Braves three. Dodgers one. to the fourth inning and Greg Brock will lead it off for the Dodgers. Midway through the final period the Lakers lead Boston by six. And Michael Cooper just took a charge on Larry Bird but the officials saw it the other way. Or Boston might really be in trouble. Brock grounded into a 3-6-3 double play his first time. Brock, Marshall, and Socha, the first three in the fourth inning. Steve Shields ready to go to work. Right through there with a fastball. It's 0 1. Same spot, 0 and 2. Into the seats just below our radio booth. Count stays, no balls, two strikes. The end of three, the Red Sox and Orioles scoreless. Detroit leads Toronto again, 4 2 after five. After four, Seattle four, Cleveland one. After two, the White Sox lead Minnesota no, one nothing. The Brewers and Yankees one one after one. The other American League action later. Rock fouls another away. National League after three, the Cubbies and Pirates are scoreless. After five, the Mets lead the Cardinals two one. Phillies lead Montreal, I think, 4 0 after 5. San Diego, Cincinnati scoreless after 3. San Francisco and Houston play tonight. Got him with an off speed curveball. Brock goes down swinging. Fields records his second strikeout. Here's Marshall who homered to right his first time. The Giants play at Houston and I bought ball players are unanimous on one thing. They all hate Sunday night games. Mm -hmm. I believe Houston's one of the few places that play at night on Sunday. Hello. Marshall gets knocked off the plate. One ball, no strikes. Marshall's going to climb back in there. He was bean a couple of years ago. Came back from it all right. But don't be surprised if Adele Murphy or Bob Horner is not moved off the plate next time up. Had a good cut at a fastball. It's one and one. Nine years in the minor leagues. Steve Shields wants to uh, let it be known you're not going to scare him out of yes. the big time. That's the calling card. Okay. 
Off speed curve. He ran up to bunt. Took it high. Two and one. Nine years in the. I wonder how many miles he logged on buses. I wonder how many diners he ate. In. Now that's what I should wonder. You should wonder about the buses. We're all confused. Curve is high. It's three and one. I traveled that bus loop a few times. We also at Hartford just had three cars one year. Hit home runs. That was a license plate. Charlie Blossfield's idea. We hit a few diners and a few fast food places. Those that were in operation. There the were none. Okay. <laughs> fast one is three and two. I was surprised you didn't admit that you traveled by horse back when you no, played the minor league. No. Pony Express. No. No. Got him with a curveball. Strikeout number three. Now that's two straight strikeouts on a slow curve. He didn't throw that slow curve that much in his other two starts. He got a couple of good hitters, Brock and Marshall on strike. That could be the guy who's catching today who knows him better than either Cerrone or Benedict do. One ball, no strengths. It's even now, one and one. Same catcher catches you year in and year out. You almost think a lot. He knows just what you want in a certain spot. Very seldom shake him off. Two balls and a strike. Sosha doubled to right his first time. The hits are even at four. The two one almost hit him as he bounced the curveball up there. He's behind three and one. He struck out three as walk one. Sharp play hit. Chambliss has it. He'll take it himself, and the inning is over. Steve gets him one, two, three in the fourth. We go to the bottom half with your score. Braves three, Dodgers one. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning, and Steve Shields will lead it off for Atlanta. It will be Shields, Ramirez, and Comets here in the bottom of the fourth. Three, four, and one for the Braves. One, four, and one for the Dodgers. Steve single to left his first time. We want to say hi to James and Ruby Allman, Dalton, Georgia, big Braves fans, as they observe the golden wedding anniversary. We hope they've had a pleasant day. Eddie Haas looks on. Fastball outside. One ball, no strikes. Ball and a strike on shield. Fernando again into the motion. Missed downstairs, two and two. Still two balls, two strikes. Little tap, it'll get past the mound. Anderson should throw him out. He does, one away.
Here's Rafi. He's flying to right, flying to center. Lakers by seven with four minutes left in that NBA championship series. Los Angeles wins. It's over. Boston wins game seven on Tuesday night. And then TBS will televise the big NBA luncheon and the NBA draft in the days ahead. for a strike. He looks sharper now than he has at any time in this game. Braves Public Relations Director Wayne Minshew is celebrating a birthday today. That's in there. A ball, two strikes. A terrible pitch. Valenzuela's let it out a notch here. That's his second strikeout. They've been in the last three hitters. And here's Brad Cummins, who has single to right and bounced to first. They may change their pitching pattern on him. Uh, come inside. Oh, I missed, missed saying, ah. Oh. When we had the cute little boy on, so I'll do it now. One ball, no strikes. Two balls, no strikes. When are we doing the uh, feet of the week, Richard? No carry to it and short left center. Landro calls for it. And that's that in the fourth. One, two, three. The end of four. Braves lead 3 1. In the final minute, the Lakers by 12. So it appears certain that they will be the new NBA champions dethroning the Celtics. And congratulations to Pat Riley and his team. The wave has sprung up here at the ballpark. That's always great news. Oh, yes. It's your favorite. Oh, I love it. It's like the hula hoop. And Dave Anderson leads off the top of the fifth. Crowd of 25, 26,000 on hand. and hold here. Tried to butt his way on again. It's one and it's a ball and two strikes. That's going to be a tough play. Well, it won't be now. See how they score it. Personally, I don't think he could have thrown him up, thrown him out, but we'll see how. They're going to call it an error. 
I don't believe he throws him out either. Good curveball, but if he feels it, and he didn't, official score a feeling that he's got to get the ball. Let's talk about it after, but he's charged with an error. Another good curveball by Shields. He's just played a good one. Valenzuela single to right his first time. Horner anticipates a bunt despite the two-run difference. Fernando is a very good hitter. And he has some power as well. Runner going. They play hit and run, and he pops it up. Horner gives chase, but he'll never get to it. It's in the picnic area. That's a sign that he's a good hitter. We'll see if he's still hitting, but very seldom do you play hit and run with a pitcher if he can't handle the bat. The Lakers are the champions of the NBA. It is now official. 111-100, the final score. Valenzuela steps out on Shields. Runner goes again, swung and missed. Owens throw, he is out of there. A great tag by Hubbard. Owen is two out of two. shaking his head. Uh, Larry knows that he came out of there in fortunate style because Hubbard made a great play on a one hopper. Then went back in to make the tag. Watch the tag. A one hopper. Hubbard reaching back. Got him. A little tap. It is foul. Stays 0-2. I'll say this for uh, Buck Owen though. He gets rid of that ball fast. It was not an easy pitch for him to handle on his end. It made him throw a little sidearm, but he's done well. Drilled in the left center field, but Harper is there calling for it. Two up. Here's Steve Sachs. He has twice flight up. We'll be leaving here after this half inning. Pete Van Wehrm, John Sterling will make their way over here. Reds lead the Padres 1-0 after four. Sachs taking a little extra time to get Fernando back into the dugout and Rusty. Owen was just telling everybody to look out for the bunt. Curve missed outside. Milt Thompson, the Braves' fine outfielding prospect, who played so well for us last fall and got off to a, such a bad start at Richmond, is up to 292 now. Mid April, he was down in the 180. He's 24 out of 30 in the stolen base department. Two and one, the count to sex. And he played well here last year when the yes. Braves called him up. He became the regular left fielder. Two and two to sack. It's 3-1 Braves. We're on the top of another fifth. Three call the curveball. Strike out number four for Shield. The end of four and a half. The Braves lead it 3 1. You look at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium on a very hot summer Sunday afternoon. 
Here's how the run scored. A two-run home run by Dale Murphy in the first. A solo home run by Mark Marshall in the second. Dodgers have hit 40 homers this year, 32 with the bases empty. And then the captain hit a double down the left field line for the Braves' third run. They lead it 3-1 as we hit the bottom of the fifth inning. John Sterling and Pete Van Weeren with you now on the Superstation. And here is the Murph to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Our congratulations to the Los Angeles Lakers who beat Boston in Boston to win the NBA championship. It's the first time the Lakers have ever beaten Boston in the finals. And boy, those two teams have played. They have played so many times. Right now, Valenzuela's pitch fouled away. They have played so many times that Boston even beat the Lakers four straight when the Lakers were the Minneapolis Lakers back in 1959, I believe. It's the eighth time they've played, and the Lakers finally won one. They're going to feel very happy. There's a strike. And the count one and two. And Pete, the big question is, how can they have a post-game show in that little grungy locker room they give the visitors in Boston? I think they'll find a way. <laughs> That's tough. It's tough just to get in the room after the game. So small. Valenzuela has had kind of shaky control today. Very unusual for him. There's the Scroogey outside, and the count two and two. Murph has homered and walked, and he has scored twice. Braves lead it 3-1 here in the bottom of the fifth and getting another lift and another very impressive outing from their young right-hander Steve Shields. There's the curveball inside, and it's 3-2 and two on Murph. Well, I don't think there's a loser in the NBA championship. I think the Celts and the Lakers are two of the best teams ever to play in the NBA. I think their teams are really that good. Just missed. The fastball just missed inside, and Murph has walked for the second time. For Valenzuela, that is walk number four. Four walks in four innings plus. Valenzuela, going into this game, had given up only 31 walks in 96 innings and struck out 78. He also had allowed only 70 hits in 96 innings. He has pitched great this year, not today. And here's Bob Horner. That just misses. The same spot that he hit the double for the RBI last time up, and that ball just missed going down the line. Do they ever overplay Horner in the infield? Steve Sachs is playing right near second base. Greg Brock has to hold Murphy on on the corner of the bag. And look at all the space on the right side of the infield. Of course, Horner is a full hitter. Valenzuela with a soft toss over. Fernando showed his great pickoff moves back in the third inning. Almost got more leaning one time. The count one and one as Scroogey goes way outside. not the good toss. That's just the soft one. The Braves, three runs, four hits, two errors. Los Angeles, a run, four hits, one error. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Rubber game of the three-game set. Checked his swing and check swing foul as a result one and two. Drive, base hit to left center field. Murphy will get the third at least. 
Guerrero backhands it, throws it in. Horner goes to second. It'll be a double to left center field for Bob Horner. The Braves have second and third and no one out. And Guerrero made a slight mistake in not throwing towards second base. Horner has hit the ball hard all three times up in this game. He lined out to left field his first time up and two doubles. Got a breaking ball on the outside portion of the plate and still pulled it into left center field. If Guerrero had thrown back to second, he might have held Horner to a single, but his momentum carrying him toward the line, he just kind of flung it back to the infield. Well, the Braves have two huge runs on the bases now. Murphy at third, Horner at second, and a 3-1 lead in the fifth, Terry Harper. That will get one in. Duncan makes the play to first in time. Horner goes to third, the RBI ground out. Dale Murphy scores for the third time, and the Braves lead it 4-1. Here's the ex-Brave left-hander Carlos Diaz in the Los Angeles bullpen. Terry Harper collects his 22nd RBI, third on the team behind Ramirez and, of course, Murph. And here's Chris Chambliss with a runner on third and only one out. The Dodgers bring their infield in. They're already down 4-1. That breaking ball, a little high, ball one. Chambliss is grounded out and walked. And when you have Jeff Dedman, Terry Forster, and Bruce Suter behind Shields in the bullpen, that run could be a big one for the Braves to get in. There's a strike one and one. Four for the Dodgers to prevent. Mr. Suter, but when it gets serious back in the eighth inning or so, he'll go down to the right field bullpen. Check swing, and it's grabbed by Dave Anderson in foul territory. So now it takes either the base hit or error to get that run in. Chambliss pop fouls to Anderson, and here's Glenn Hubbard. on the day as fly to center and reached on Steve Sachs error back in the third. One and up. Oh, Horner at third base with two men out here in the bottom of the fifth. Braves lead it 4-1. And that pitch high outside sooner. And Pete, I don't think it's any coincidence that Braves have scored today with Murphy and Horner being involved throughout. They have to score with those two guys driving runs in to win ball games. That hasn't been happening a lot lately, but it's a good sign to see it happening today. Absolutely. A strike, two and one. If Bob Horner had been swinging the bat poorly, then you'd say, well, maybe he's never going to come back from that injury. But Horner has not been overmatched. He's been swinging well, not just producing. Three and one. Bob Horner hasn't played a lot of baseball for the past year and a half. When he gets going, the Braves going to get going. We see the cap at third. That count's gone full three and two on Hubbard. Buck Owen on deck with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Those are very un-Fernando statistics. A 3-2. Driven to center field, but Guerrero should get it. He does, and the Braves wind up with one run on one hit, the double by Horns. No errors in one left. At the end of five, it is 4-1 Braves. We go to the sixth inning in Atlanta. Braves lead it four to one. Pete Van Wert and John Sterling with you on the Superstation. And yeah, this is a big day in the life of Jill Faraday. Little darling just graduated from Georgia. Got engaged to Mr. Jim Perry. Kind of a doubleheader, so we give our best to those two great young people. 
Paul Worley in the bull ballpark today from Smithfield, North Carolina, says hello to everyone. And Philip Walker has a birthday today from Augusta. He's in the ballpark too. Mariano Duncan leads off for LA here in the sixth. Drags the bunt, and it's going to be a base hit. He has got speed. That's not the way you do it. <laughs> Usually you drag it past the pitcher's mouth, make the second baseman have to field it or the first baseman come off, but he got a break and lugged it out. He got it past the pitcher's mound, all right. <laughs> but not the way you're supposed to do it. Kind of a line drive past the pitcher's mound. Usually it rolls by the mound. This one just drops in there between Shields and Ramirez, and Duck has got himself a single. If he could do it, he's going to make a million dollars a year easy. That's kind of tough to do. And Duncan, who has all kinds of speed at first base with no one out, here's Kenny Landro. Curveball is hit to right, and Commons is right there. One away. Pete, you have to be impressed by Shields. He, he has a pretty good arm. He has an idea of what to do as you look at Terry Forster begin to warm up in the Braves bullpen. And he's a very unflappable man off the mound and especially on the hill. That impresses me the most about him is his poise. Sometimes you'll find pitchers with great stuff who just get a little scatterbrain and they're out there on the hill and things happen. They seem to bother Steve Shields. The base runner gets on. He just seems to shrug it off and goes right back to work on the next hitter. Here's Guerrero. One out, one on. In the sixth. Curveball bends outside. One and no. Guerrero has singled in two trips. And just kills Braves pitching. Lifetime Guerrero hitting at 333 against the Braves before his base hit back in the second inning. Duncan runs very well, can steal a base, but normally you don't steal when you're down 4 1. Especially in this kind of a ballpark. Guerrero will be kept in the ballpark on this fly ball to right. Brad makes the catch two way. I'd say a baseball is maybe the strangest game. Steve Shields has bounced around for nine years. Pitched well in spring training, had to go back a numbers game. The Braves had to disable two of their starting pitchers, Pascual Perez and Len Barker. Had to recall Shields, and I'll tell you what, Pete, he's pitching his way on this team. This is his third consecutive good start. Not great, but good. Today has been the best. He pitches down low to Greg Brock, ball one. He's pitching like he means to stay up here, doesn't he? Yes, sir. It's something you notice when you see a guy all the time. You can't see him one day, not see him for a month. That's why we say that Shields is kind of poised, kind of unflappable, kind of cool. That's a great trait. Pitch down low to Brock, 2-0. You have a right-hand hitter, Mike Marshall, on deck. So Shields, if he walks Brock or gives up a base hit, I'm sure will pitch to Marshall. There's the strike, two and one. We have a great birthday greeting, and I've met this little girl, and she is, in a few years, going to break a lot of guys' hearts. Bob Larson's beautiful little Cheryl, she is six years old today, and is she a honey? My goodness. Bob came in with a picture of her. He's not too much of a doting father. And <laughs> yeah, most people just send a note. <laughs> now that Larson, you know, you give him an inch. Ground ball, Brock. Base hit right field. Duncan will go to third. And with two outs, the Dodgers have runners on the corners at first and third. And they have a guy coming up who can tie this ball game up with one swing, Mike Marshall. Forster continues to work on the Braves' bullpen. Brock. Pulls the ball into that first base hole and runners at first and third. Marshall hit a home run his first time up to right center field and Shields came back and struck him out. Shields has struck out four and walked only one, giving up now six hits. We're in the top of the sixth. The Braves lead 4-1. Buck Owen goes out there and gives Shields a fist. Pete, you made a good point on radio that Owen has been catching Shields all year and really is catching a heck of a game. Calling a very good game. Marshall's last time to the play, they really pitched him well. They were going in and out on him, had him all mixed up. The curveball outside. Now, Marshall struck out on a curveball, a breaking ball away. 
If you throw the fastball to Marshall, you better get it in on his hands, in his kitchen, as they say. Because if you leave it over the plate, he'll drive the ball to right center. That foul tip, one and one. Duncan, of course, runs very well at third. Brock just average speed at first base. Two men out in the Dodgers' six. The Braves lead it by 3 4 1. There's the fastball fouled off. And count one and two. Shields fastball moves a bit. It's not an overpowering fastball, but a good one. And it moves, sinks, and he has a pretty good breaking ball. If you throw the ball 100 miles an hour in the major leagues and it's straight, you're going to get hit. Absolutely. Got to move. Now the one, two. Oh, breaking ball almost had him. They check first base. Randy Marsh says no. And the count evens at two and two. Shields is 26, and there are many pitchers who, who don't mature to that age, or even older. Just the beginning for Steve Shields. He's got a big pitch here, two and two on Marshall. Curveball struck him out. Strikeout number five for Shields. He's got Marshall twice and twice on breaking balls. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left, end of five and a half. Braves four, and the Dodgers one. Part of the big crowd at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. <laughs> Some people catching up on homework. Other people enjoying the game in the sun. Larry Owen will lead off of the Braves here in the sixth. One thing the Braves have no complaints about, and that is the loyalty of their fans. Another big crowd today. The Braves lead last year's attendance, and as you know, Atlanta has not been playing well. Fans have been just great. There's a bunt buck Owen. Valenzuela with a base hit. He had a chance, but lost the ball. Pete, I know we talked about it on radio. I guess we can talk about it on TV. Larry Owen, to put it simply, has done nothing wrong. He keeps playing like this. He's going to keep playing. He has caught well. He has thrown well. And this base hit maintains that 500 batting average. Pretty good idea with the infield back. Get it down that third base side. Valenzuela might have gotten him, might not have. No chance after he bobbled the ball. It's a base hit for Owen. Yesterday's game was just on Braves radio and just Ernie and Pete work. Now, I'm listening to the game. Driving around doing a bunch of errands. Here's Shields in a bunt situation. And he bunts it foul out of play. Ernie said to Pete yesterday during the game, well, what happens if Buck Owen keeps playing that way? What did you say, Pete? You know, keep on playing. Absolutely. And so Buck Owen is playing very, very well. He's simply a better hitter than he had been in the past. Runners, or rather Owen, leaving, but will hang on as the bun is foul back Owen, too. Brock and Dave Anderson on top of the plate. And it's going to be very tough to get Larry Owen to second base. He does not run well. Carlos Diaz is warming up in the Dodger pen. Rick Camp going in the Braves bullpen. Braves will probably try to bunt again. Let's see. They do, and he gets it down, and it rolls foul. So Shields a strikeout victim, and Larry Owen has to return to first base. Almost good bunt. That'll be Valenzuela's third strikeout. One away with a runner on first, and here's the hot hitter on the Braves, Rafael Ramirez, 0 for 3 today. But hitting 333 in his last 18 games and has an eight-game hitting streak on the line. Ramirez has started hitting the way he did a couple of years ago. If he has a pitch he can handle, he's turning on it and pulling it down the left field line. His three-run home run yesterday went to left. His two-run double off the wall in Chicago and home run the win it in Chicago to left field. Scroogey is outside ball one.
2 0. Brad Cummins, gone deck. Braves lead at 4 1, bottom of the sixth. And this homestand, a very important one for the Braves, would get a great lift if they took two out of three from Los Angeles. There are three innings to go. There's a base hit right center field. Hit like a bullet. Owen will put down the brakes, and it's a good thing. Ramirez hits it his ninth straight. He hits a bullet to center field. And the Braves have two on one out for Brad Cummins and on deck from Dale Murphy. He got a pitch that was down and away, and when he doesn't get a pitch on the inside portion of the plate that he can try to pull, he'll go the opposite way with it. That time he just laced it off to the right field side of second base. Cummins today has single down. Grounded out and flied out one for three. That'll be fouled down the third baseline. Owen at second, Ramirez at first, only one man out here in the bottom of the sixth. The Braves with seven hits off Valenzuela in six innings and also four walks. One and one that screwball went outside. Breaking ball down and in low and a nice block by Socha. I'm, I'm sure Valenzuela will tell you as you look at Steve Howe now joining Carlos Diaz in the Dodger bullpen. I'm sure Valenzuela will tell you after this game he has really not been on his game today. I've never seen him pitch a game where he's been behind so many hitters. Doesn't happen too often. He's a great one without question. The 2 1. It missed low. And with Murphy and Horner coming up, the last thing Valenzuela in the world wants to do is walk Brad Thomas. He's got a 3-1 pitch. Thomas can really zone a pitch here, really look for something he can handle. In the air to short right, Marshall will make the catch, and Owen will bluff, but he's not going anywhere. So two outs, and here's Dale Murphy. Murphy homered over the center field fence his first time with a man on. Has walked the next two times. He has scored three runs today. He has 14 homers, 41 RBIs, hitting at 317. Runners lead. Murph takes up high ball one. Bob Horner on deck. Run scored is a very important stat. It just isn't publicized very much. Murph is three behind the league leader, Vince Coleman of St. Louis. Coleman's going to score some runs this time. <laughs> he will score some runs. Pitch. Murph loses the bat. Balance well. Had a tumble over it. The ball goes foul in the right field stands. Murphy loses the bat a lot. That time he lost it, and Valenzuela had a skip rope on the mound. Really got sawed off here, and the meat end of the bat went about ankle high right out toward the mound. Watch it. Right in on his fists. Murph still has the handle. Almost speared Valenzuela as it came back up the middle. Dodger trainers out there to make sure Fernando's okay. He is. Well, Murph gets a new club. I was talking to Murphy in the dugout for quite a long time before the game yesterday, and I was amazed at what a light bat he uses. You know, most big, strong hitters will use a heavy bat, 34, 35, even heavier. 
as far as ounces go. He uses only a 32-ounce bat. It's a very light bat. He said he does that for bat speed. Mm -hmm. He can really whip that. The one, two. Two and two. And every once in a while, he says, when, it, when he feels like he's a little bit stronger, he might borrow a teammate's bat, such as a Chris Shambliss, who uses a heavier bat. But that's a very light bat for a big hitter like Murphy to be using. Up the middle, and it gets through, base hit. A run will score. Owen scores, the Braves lead 5-1, another RBI base hit for Dale Murphy. Here comes the, the guy the Braves fans love to hate, Tommy Lasorda. He has not had to make this trip very often this year, not with Fernando on the mound. Well, the meeting on the mound, Fernando normally starts and completes what he starts, but not today. Going into this game, Valenzuela has six complete games and 12 starts. He will leave, and Carlos Diaz will come in. You see Carlos trotting across the infield. The Braves lead at 5-1 here in the sixth. With two on and two out, as Diaz comes in, will drop out for this. There's the ex-brave, Carlos Diaz. And he has good numbers, as you see. Great strikeout walk ratio. Yeah, a story about Carlos, I don't know if it's ever been told before. He was a member of the Braves at one time, and he was traded from the Braves to the New York Mets for Tom Hausman. The deal had been made on a weekday afternoon, and the Braves were trying to find Carlos Diaz to notify him that he had been traded to the Mets. You know where he was? Where? He was over at the World Congress Center representing the Braves at an autograph session for a convention appearance. <laughs> kind of a strange place to be the day you're traded, huh? <laughs> I guess. I guess. Diaz, second season with the, with the Dodgers. It's a wonder that deal wasn't publicized and some fan heard it on the radio and came up to Carlos and said, did you hear about the trade? <laughs> some players do no. hear about him that no, way. No, but... Two on, two out. And the Braves have good speed on the bases. Ramirez at second, Murphy at first. Here's Bob Horner, who's two for three, two doubles and an RBI. And a breaking ball strike. The first time up, Horner really ripped it to left field, but right at Ken Landro. Next two times, he's doubled. One down the third baseline, the other to left center. He's hit the ball as hard as you can hit it three times in a row. Five one Braves in the sixth. That missed outside one and one. In fact, now that I think back on it, they did notify Carlos, and he decided he had one more hour to go. He'd stay there and represent the Braves for one more hour. What a good guy. That caught the outside one and two. ball low inside two and two Diaz now it gets set for the two two Horner protecting the plate reaches out just gets a piece and fouls it back today Murphy and Horner are four for five, two walks, three runs scored, and four RBIs. Well, they have carried the brunt of the hitting. The Braves really waiting for both those guys to get hot at the same time. Steve Shields has done it. Another excellent job on the mound. 5-1 Braves here in the bottom of the sixth. 
Diaz taking a lot of time. Corner cuts and misses and a fish out of the strike zone. Well, the Braves get one in the six. A run on three hits and leave two. At the end of six, it's 5-1 Atlanta. Buck Owen catching and Steve Shields in his third good start in a row and his best start to date on the hill for the Braves with a 5-1 lead in the top of the seventh inning. Bottom third of the Dodger order, Mike Socia leads off for L.A. And to tell you all about it, here's Pete. Thank you, John. Socia has doubled and grounded out to first. Over at the knees, nothing and one. Shields with five strikeouts in the ball game. He's walked only one. Breaking ball missed, one and one. Now the one one coming. Two and one. And the 2-1 pitch on the way. Line toward center. Murphy coming on. He won't get to it. Base hit for Socia. He'll bring up Dave Anderson. Anderson is struck out, and he reached on an error by Bob Horner. We will be getting a pinch hitter for Carlos Diaz. Steve Howe is up again in the Dodger bullpen. And the Braves bullpen active once again. Jeff Dedman and Terry Forster both up. 0-1, oh the count on Anderson. Al Oliver waiting the bat for Diaz. 1-1. One one. Dodgers now with seven hits off Steve Shields. He's kept them well scattered. Brian Snicker signaling that both pitchers are ready out there if needed. And then the count goes to two and one. Wouldn't you think in these days of all these modern electronics, it would be a more modern way to signal that two pitchers in the bullpen are ready than waving your cap? They've been doing that for a hundred years. <laughs> yes, they have. <laughs> they raise the cap. That means all set. There's the two on pitch. It's low and outside. I think the Houston Astros do have a little radio gizmo that they use to communicate between the bullpen and the dugout. But they're the only ones I've ever seen do anything differently. Of course, they have a dugout that goes about two miles in Houston. Three and one on Dave Anderson. Nobody out. Associate first. Braves with a 5-1 lead. We're in the seventh. That fills it three and two. Runner not going on the 3-2 pitch. That's deep to left field. Terry Harper goes back on the warning track. Can't get it. Home run, Dave Anderson. A most unlikely home run hitter, Dave Anderson with his second homer of the year. RBIs number three and four, and that makes it a 5-3 ball game. We may see Eddie Haas wait if he is thinking about making a change here until the pinch hitter is announced into the ball game. Terry Whitfield is going to be the pinch hitter. Al Oliver has been called back. Now Whitfield is officially in the game, and now Eddie Haas will make his move. Well, you're going to hear Steve Shields get a nice head. In his third major league start, he has gotten the Braves into the seventh inning with a two-run lead. Terry Forster will get the call from the Braves' bullpen to face either Terry Whitfield or a right-hand pinch hitter. Tommy Lasorda could, could make a counter move there. And here's the hand for Steve Shields. He 
youngster from Hope Plus, Alabama, did quite a job getting the Braves into the seventh inning with a two-run lead. Terry Forster will have his eight warm-up tosses before facing the pinch hitter. And while he takes those warm-up tosses, we'll watch this. And tonight on the sports page, when the cheering stops, interview is Jamal Wilkes, a Laker who is forced to cheer his team on from the bench this year out for the season with an injury to his knee. And he talks about his rehabilitation program and his chances to play another year in the NBA. That's tonight, the sports page at 10.05 Eastern right here at the Superstation. With left-hander Terry Forster into the game, Tommy Lasorda countering by sending up a switch hitter who will bat right-handed, R.J. Reynolds, to bat for Whitfield. Reynolds hitting 288, no homers, 15 RBIs. He's had a bad hamstring that kept him out of the lineup. Of course, his first pitch is fouled off. Terry Forster making his 18th appearance out of the Braves bullpen. He fit very well. Good hits to innings pitch ratio, good strikeouts to walks ratio. And he tries to preserve a two run lead here. It's 5 3 Atlanta. Steals worked six innings, allowed eight hits, three runs, walked one, struck out five. 0 oh 2 on R.J. Reynolds. You saw a lot of managerial wheels turning before all these moves were made. Oliver was on deck, but when Tommy Lasorda sensed that Eddie Haas may be about to remove his pitcher, he put Terry Whitfield, who's been in a horrible slump, into the game. That keeps Oliver's bat available for later on. Whitfield lifted for R.J. Reynolds when the change was made. There's the 0-2. Fouled away. R.J. Reynolds. A guy whose name will forever be remembered by Atlanta Braves fans for that squeeze bunt. Dodger Stadium in 1983 that just about sealed the fate of the Braves that year. Two strike pitch to Reynolds again low and inside. One and two. Forster, a longtime member of the Dodgers. He played for Los Angeles from 1978 through 1982. He got him. Fastball outside corner. One guard in the seventh. There's the fastball on the outside on the knees. Good pitch by Terry. Steve Sachs is 0 for 3. He's flying to right, fly to center, and struck out. of the catcher Larry Owen. 0 and 1. Zane Smith against Jim Gott tomorrow night. That game will be on Braves Radio only. Back on the Superstation both Tuesday and Wednesday evenings. Steve Bedrosian scheduled to start on Tuesday night against Mike Kruko. Rick Mailer against Atley Hamaker Wednesday evening. Here's the 0 1. 1 and 1. In case you joined us late, Bedrosian. Examined to the hospital today for a back ailment. He's got a muscle strain in his lower back, and that may cause him to miss his Tuesday start. We'll have to wait and see. One and two now on Steve Sachs. Deadman is ready if needed, and the Braves bullpen. Steve Howe will be the next Dodger pitcher. two coming got by everybody two and two now the two two to Sachs just missed outside and the count full three and two Here's the payoff pitch. Struck him out. Got him with a slider. So Forster puts away two Dodger hitters, R.J. Reynolds and Steve Sachs, both with a strikeout. Mariano Duncan will be the batter. He has a bunt single in three at bats. Slider. 
slider miss low and inside. Terry Forrester sticks with two pitches, fastball and a hard slider. And when you are a short relief pitcher, you can get away with using just two. Right to the shortstop, Rafael Ramirez. And Forrester retires all three Dodger hitters he faces. We go to the bottom half of the seventh. It's the Braves five, Los Angeles three. The new Dodger pitcher as he moves to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Left-hander Steve Howe making his 15th appearance in this comeback season for him. He'll be facing Terry Hopper, Chris Chambliss, and Glenn Hubbard. Carlos Diaz worked a third of an inning, struck out the only man he faced. Howe, of course, back from... Another bout with the Drug Rehabilitation Center this year. Kept him out of baseball for a long time. Everybody hoping that Steve is on the right track now. He didn't pitch at all last season. Harper is 0 for 3, takes outside ball 1. He's rounded out all three times up. And the count 2-0 and on Terry Harper. He did drive in a run back in the fifth inning when he grounded out. Here's the 2-0 offering. 3-0. We have a viewer today in Huntsville, Alabama that certainly deserves some mention. She very seldom misses a Braves game. This is Courtney Ewing, soon to celebrate her 103rd birthday. Well, isn't that something? Here's the 3-1 delivery. That will be out of play. Let's see, that means Mrs. Ewing was born in 1882 when professional baseball was, what, about six years old. Full count three and two on Terry Harper. On the first base of the walk of Harper. First walk issued by Howe, of course. It is the fifth walk given up by Dodger pitching. It will bring up Chris Chambliss, who is 0 for 2. Chambliss has bounced to the pitcher, fouled out the third, and walked. He could really use the base hit. He's one for his last 18. The average is hit to 2.11. Duncan just missed it. Went right through his hand. You'll see the play again. Harper is not even halfway down to second base now. So Howe goes right to the bag, and Duncan just missed it. Then both Duncan and Sachs went out to short center field to retrieve the ball, and that left second base unoccupied. And Chris Campbell's had a foot race with Greg Brock, the first baseman, towards second, and Chris beat him to the bag and to the Braves. Now have second and third on a walk and a sack bunt and no one else. Sacrifice fielder's choice or a shortstop. The officials scoring Duncan on that play. Runner second and third for Glenn Hubbard. Charlie Williams, the plate umpire, out to the mound has had a break up a meeting. Hubbard on the afternoon is 0 
four for three. He was flying to center twice and he reached down there by two seconds. Dodgers now have committed two errors in this ball game. They now have committed 65 errors on the season. That's tops in the National League. The infield is playing in. And a count, one ball, no strikes on Hubbard. It's amazing about the components in baseball. The Dodgers pitching is excellent. And they commit the home run, but they don't score a lot of runs, and they have very poor defense. And kind of evened everything out to a 500 record. Now the 1 0 to Hubbard. 2 0. Bruce Schroeder is back in the Atlanta bullpen. We're running down toward the pitcher's spot in the battle order. Foul back. Braves lost the first game of this series, fell behind 2-0 in the first inning yesterday, but bounced back to win. Now try to take two out of three from Los Angeles in the first series of this two-week homestead. There's the 2-1 pitch. Oh, and inside three and one. One more bad one that be loaded with Larry Owen, a pinch hitter for Forster, and Rafael Ramirez due up. There is nobody out. Here's the three one offering. Fly ball. Should be deep enough to score the run. Guerrero back under it. He's got it. Terry Hopper tags it third. The throw coming over toward third, but Chris Travis will get over there too. And that makes it six to three. So give Glenn Hubbard his tenth RBI of the season on a sack fly to center. third with one man out. Larry Owen will be the batter. Owen has walked, struck out, and had a bunt single. So Owen's batting average still at the 500 mark. Four for eight. Larry Forster is moving. He loves to hit. He's not a chance to yet this year. One thing the Dodgers do a little differently from other ball clubs defensively, when they move their infield in, if they have a slower runner at third, which they have right now in Chris Campbell, they don't bring that infield all the way in. They bring it in about halfway. So the senior runner at third, they play that infield in much tighter. time this season. <laughs> Only you would keep records of such. And <laughs> by the way, major league record is 911. I'm told you're right. <laughs> Tigers set that two years ago. Down goes to two and one. Six runs, eight hits, two errors for Atlanta. Three runs, eight hits, two errors for the Dodgers. And the 2 1 pitch to Owen. Line drive, left center field. That'll get another one home. Owen takes the turn at first. He'll hold on there, but Buck Owen strikes again. That's his first RBI. And he has had himself quite a series. That is his fifth hit in nine at bats in this series. It's 7 to 3.
Larry Owen really worked on his hitting the past couple of years in Richmond. He goes down, gets the fastball, and he is having a dream weekend. And he keeps playing like this. He's going to keep on playing, period. Terry Forster swearing the bunt takes it high. With the lead now back up to four runs, Bruce Sutter sits down in the Braves bullpen and Forster bats. I know he's a team man, and if they ask him to bunt, he will, but he'd love to get up there and swing. He's batting 429 lifetime. 33 hits and 77 at bats. He was faking the butt that time. It's one and one. And it's no close. He can hit. And by the way, he'll tell you that, too. A lot. Many times. <laughs> Many more times than you'll see the wave during the course of the season. <laughs> A lot. Plenty this time. It's down the third base side. Oh, he got the job on Bob. the second time in the inning that you score a play the same way sacrifice field is choice error that'll drive the manager to drink and I don't mean just water well the runners are at first and second still only one out for Rafael Ramirez is one for four Rays lead at 7-3 time for some more here in the bottom of the seventh in this inning on end run. And the Cubs also lead the league in that category. They've given up almost one on end run per ball game. Mariano Duncan goes to second, tanks on the third, not in time now. Moving over to third is all on. Really a double play ball. Pretty good play by Mariano Duncan. He went deep in the hole to get that one. And they're at first and third now for Brad Thomas. Ball games get away from you. 
Murphy today has homered, walked twice and singled. A perfect afternoon. Two for two with three runs scored and three out of the eye. gives the Braves an early lead with a two-run double in the third. After the Cubs tie the game, it's into extra innings, where Ramirez steps into the spotlight again. With a runner on first, Rossi launches a drive to left field that clears the ivy and gives Atlanta a two-run lead. All four runs coming off the bat of the Braves shortstop. In the bottom of the 11th, Perry Harper seals the win with a lunging catch, and the Braves win their fifth extra inning. Let's check out the Redman scoreboard. Philadelphia has won their ball game already. Four to one. Doubleheader in New York. Dwight Gooden won that first game for the Mets. You see San Diego against Mario Soto, a 4-1 lead. That would be Andy Hawkins' 11th straight win. Cubs have a lead, and Houston will play tonight in the Astrodome. In the American League, Detroit trying to even that series at two games apiece against Toronto. Boston with a big lead over Baltimore. And there's the red man scoreboard, and we go to the eighth inning. The Braves leading here, 8-3. And we have a pinch hitter, Candy Maldonado, batting for Ken Landro, taking low ball one. Maldonado only 165 for the year, two homers, six RBIs. Two and oh, the count. Forster deals down low, 3 0. <laughs> Taking the strike, 3 and 1. And might get by and does base hit left field. So Maldonado starts out the Dodger eighth with a pinch hit single. First hit allowed by Forster. Ninth hit off Brave pitching. And Pedro Guerrero steps in. He has a single in three at bat. Hubbard make the pivot here. He doesn't take the step back. He just goes forward and jumps the runner. He gets a lot of steam on it for the double play. That'd be an interesting feature sometime. There are about six different ways to do that down at second base, and it depends on who your base runner is and who your hitter is, what the situation is, where the throw's coming from. And he's got every one of those moves. There's Greg Brock. Brock has hit into a double play, struck out and singled. Broken bat tap, Forster flags it down. Nothing waiting for the Dodgers in the eighth. They had a base hit, but the double play took care of the base runner. We go to the bottom half of the eighth. Atlanta with a five-run lead. Bottom of the eighth inning, Maldonado stays in the game in left. 
left field, replacing Landro, for whom he pinch hit. And Ken Obersell will bat for the first time to lead off the eighth. OB-268, no homers, six RBI. He takes the strike from Steve Howell and one. It's been a while since the Braves have won two games in a row. It's the time to do here this afternoon. And last time it happened, May 18th and 19th against the Cubs. And if memory serves, the Braves have not won three in a row this year at all. So if they hang on, then tomorrow night would be a step for the Braves. One ball, two strikes. Different players drive in their runs today. Murphy has three RBIs. Thomas, Corner, Harper, Hubbard, and Owen, one each. Brock holding Oberfell. And the count even on Terry Harper. One ball, one strike. Dodgers head to Cincinnati right after this game. Three-game series with the Reds begins tomorrow night. Two and one. Valenzuela started the game, issued five runs and eight hits in five and two-thirds innings. Diaz worked a third of an inning, allowed nothing. Now gave up three unearned runs, and then he go. Steve Pack flips to Mariano Duncan. Bad throw, pass drop. Harper will be awarded second base as that ball went in and out of the Braves' dugout. So yet another Dodger error. This time a throwing error by Mariano Duncan. It's the fourth Dodger error of the day. And the Dodgers had with their realigned infield moving Pedro Guerrero back to the outfield, moving Mariano Duncan over to short, moving Dave Anderson over to third. They played six straight games without an error. But now that's no longer significant. All in one on Chris Chambliss. Chris 0 for 2. a position that has been wide open for the Braves for someone to step in and claim all season. And neither Chris Chambliss nor Gerald Perry can get anything going offensively. Both down in the low 200. the better player for speed on the bases Perry the better player but one of them really needs to start hitting again the two strike pitch one and two Run 
runs, 11 hits, two errors for the Braves. Three runs, nine hits, and four errors now for the Dodgers. As you said, Pete, really a big base hit for Chris. Chris did not start for 24 games, and here against a left-hander, he pulls the ball, he goes down and gets the curveball, and yanks it in the right field for an RBI. Chris now getting a spate of games together. He has played the last four or five straight. Glenn Hubbard, nothing for three. He drove in a run with a sacrifice fly in the seventh inning. Mariano Duncan can't come up with this one. Sticking in the left field. Campbell takes the third. Braves have runners at first and third. The fifth error made by the Dodgers, and four have come in the last two innings. Duncan gets there, but it goes off his glove. I imagine Dave Anderson will be playing shortstop fairly soon. Or they might even go with their veteran, who is an outstanding player in many respects. Bill Russell probably doesn't have the range of Anderson or Duncan. But Pete, you know this, that they've had problems no matter who they've played in the infield, and even in the outfield, they've had some problems. The defense has been a Dodger puzzle for the last two years. The Tommy Lasorda has tried fitting different pieces to solve and are unable to come up with the right combination. Owen with two singles, a strikeout, a walk, an RBI. And he's now batting 556. Runners first and third, one out. Ball one. The way this inning is gone, without the bad throw from Mariano Duncan, it would have been a double play on Terry Harper. Chris Campbell would have gotten a base hit. If Duncan makes that play, he gets a fourth play at second. The inning's over. Instead, only one out in the inning, and the Braves threatening to add to a six-run lead. And in that May 1st game, the Braves scored 17 runs. And let me tell you something, it's been a long time between cups of coffee. Here's the 2-0. Greg Brock in foul territory over near the Braves dugout. Can't quite reach it. Two and one. destructing in this game. They got back into it with a two-run top half of the seventh inning on Dave Anderson's homer to make it 5-3, but now it's a 9-3 that a lead. And the count, 3-1 and one on Owen. Terry Forster on deck. ball club up this weekend. Can you imagine what a happy guy Buck Owen is going to be? Today he has three hits and a walk. He threw out the only base runner trying to steal. And he had virtually no chance of coming up to this team. Both catches got hurt. Buck Owen returns and it'll be a weekend that will live in his memory for the rest of his life. Now Terry Forster won't be buying. He had a sacrifice reaching on the error by Anderson back in the seventh.
certain people that you really pull for in the game, and Buck Owens always been one of them. He's such a nice individual. He would be the star of the game on radio today, but somebody used him yesterday. <laughs> Use him again. <laughs> Here's the one-one. Foul. Third base from Dave Anderson. Yeah, he looks at this one. going to be well up against Pete. Well, you know, Pete, uh, how hard he's worked and what a good guy he is. And he would say his chances to make the team this year were minimal and maybe less than that. And what a weekend. My goodness. There he is. Look at that smile. <laughs> Look at that smile. That's good. One ball, two strikes on Forster. Hubbard off second, Owen off first. Two pitch. Two and two. Four twenty-nine. Lifetime batting average. Thirty-three to seventy-seven. Shortstop Mariano Duncan will grab it and hold it for out number two. we go back to the top of the order. Rafael Ramirez, who was batting for the sixth time in the ball game. He's flied out twice, struck out, singled, and into a fourth play. Steve 
Seager only 156 for the year. No homers, two RBIs, one for five as a pinch hitter. Nothing and one. Here's the one strike delivery. That evens the count. Diego's up his lead over Cincinnati to 5-1 as they go to the ninth inning at Riverfront. So it looks like the Padres are going to win today. Maintain that healthy lead in the National League West. Here's the 2-1 delivery to Yeager, 2-2. Two two. Braves have had eight strikeouts from their pitching this afternoon. Shields stands five in the sixth inning two work. Forster now with three strikeouts. Now the 2-2 two -two on the way. Strike him out. That's the ninth strikeout of the day for Atlanta pitching. Number four for Terry Forster. And it's all up to Dave Anderson. Anderson has struck out, reached out of there, and hit a two-run homer in the seventh inning that made this a close ball game. It was only 5-3 at the time, but the Braves then got three in the bottom of the seventh, two in the bottom of the eighth. Here's the 1-0 from Forster. 1-1. Bill Russell has moved on deck. He would bat for Howe if Anderson reaches. Two and one. Now the two-one delivery. Fly ball right field. Brad Cummings is there, and the Braves have won it by a final score of ten to three. Is Terry Forster. Saves the game for Steve Shields, who picks up his first major league victory and is one of the first men out of the dugout to come out and shake the hand of Terry Forster. He's right behind Eddie Hard. Steve Shields, Terry Forster, the two men that did a final score, 10-3. Back to the totals and to my right, right after this. at 10-3. There are your totals. 13 hits for Atlanta, 9 for the Dodgers. L.A. with 5 errors. Braves made 2. Atlanta leaving 12 men on base. Los Angeles 5. Steve Shields picks up his first Major League win. Terry Forster gets his first save of the year. And the loss goes to Fernando Valenzuela. Now 5-7. and seven. Let's look at some highlights. It all began for the Braves in the bottom half of the first inning against Fernando. Dale Murphy took what looked like a screw ball down in the way and deposited it over the center field fence for Murphy, his 14th home run of the season. It gave him 41 RBIs at that point. Murphy went on to drive in one more run before the afternoon was through as the Braves had their biggest offensive explosion since way back in the 1st of May when they scored 17 runs. An inning later, Mike Marshall made it a two to one ball game when he went the opposite way off Steve Shields. For Marshall, that was his ninth homer of the season. And his 27th RBI was also the last ball he hit all day as he struck out his next three times up. Braves picked up another run in the bottom half of the third. Murphy running. Bob Horner drives it down the left field line. Horner on the day with two doubles. Throws in his 15th run here. That made it three to one. One of the big heroes for the Braves, Larry Owen. He had three hits and four at-bats, drove in two. One base runner attempted to steal. Buck Owen threw him out. Good play there by Glenn Hubbard as well. And the story of the day, really, though, besides Larry Owen, Steve Shields, in his third Major League start, records his first Major League win. Working six innings, allowing three runs, eight hits, walking one, and striking out five. So the Braves make it two out of three. Over the Los Angeles Dodgers, their record now 
22 wins and 30 losses. Tomorrow night, Braves radio only against the Giants. We'll be back with you on the Superstation Tuesday night. The scheduled starters, Steve Bedrosian and Mike Kuko. That'll be a 7.35 Eastern time game. Until then, for John Sterling, Kip Carey, Ernie Johnson, our director, Mark Goldsmith, and our entire TBS crew, Pete Badwaran, from the stadium in Atlanta, where the final score was the Braves 10, Los Angeles 3. Stay tuned next for the Superstation Sports Report with John Frick.